All right, well, welcome to uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's first inaugural address. I'm going to try a different style this time. I'm going to pretty much only define words. So we'll see how that works. Uh, March 4th, 1933. Important to understanding this is what an inaugural address is. This is a first inaugural address. An inaugural address is almost always um, specifically referring to a speech given by a new president. Inaugural is a word that basically means first or new or opening, something like that. And so this is Franklin Delano Roosevelt's that was delivered in 1933. So what was going on in 1933? Big time, great depression. Uh, this might be able to argue that this speech was given at a time in U.S. history. The only time when things were worse for the United States could have been like during the Civil War. So this is 1933, Great Depression, millions of people out of work, hungry, starving, very, very bad times for the U.S. Mr. Hoover, Mr. Chief Justice, my friends. Oh, President Hoover. Uh, President Hoover, okay. I said I was only going to define words, so he's, when, when he actually spoke these words, Hoover was still president, I'm guessing, because maybe he hadn't been sworn in yet as president. Mr. Chief Justice refers to the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. And the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court has a very important job when people uh, give are, are inaugurated as U.S. presidents. Uh, they do the swearing in where the president says the presidential oath. An oath is basically a promise and it's in the Constitution. So they read a part of the Constitution. I do hereby solemnly swear to uphold something, 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 the Constitution. And uh, that is, uh, okay, from now on, only words. I'm going to highlight them, define them. Consecration. Consecration is kind of like a blessing. It's sacred. Sacred blessing. Uh, I am certain on this day my fellow Americans expect my induction. To induce something or to induct something is to bring it into. Bring into my induction into the presidency. I will address. In this case, address means speak. I will address them with candor. Candor means honesty. And a decision which the present, when he says the present, he means right now. The present situation of our people impels so the present situation would be Great Depression. Impels is hardly ever used anymore, um, but it basically means uh, requires or brings into something like that. But in this case, what he means is requires. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth. Preeminently basically means most importantly. Most importantly, the time to speak the truth, the whole truth, frankly. So again, frank basically means honest. And boldly is like without fear. Nor need we shrink from honesty facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure, which means survive, and has endured, will revive, 
basically means come back. Prosper means succeed or be strong. So, first of all, let me assert. To assert something is to say. I'll just put that, but it, it means a little bit more than that. But assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Oh, hello. Mm, that's probably one of the most famous phrases in all of speeches ever given in the English language. So I guess I'll highlight it. I'll highlight the whole section. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. Wow, that's complicated. So first of all, you need to realize that this whole thing that he's saying right here, he is defining fear. So what is fear? Fear is a nameless, unreasoning. Unreasoning means can't think. To reason is to think. But sometimes if you're so terrified, you can't think. Unjustified means Uh, basically, it means without cause. Unjustified terror, which paralyzes. Paralyzed means you can't move, can't act. I think is really what he's talking about. You can't act. Needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. So this is like a complicated phrase here. To convert retreat into advance. Retreat is going backwards. Advance is going forwards. In every dark hour of our national life, a leadership of frankness and vigor. Vigor is energy. Strength. Has met with that understanding and support of the people themselves, which is essential to victory. Essential, that's one of our words. Necessary. And I am convinced that you will again give that support to leadership in these critical days. In such spirit on my part and on yours, we face our common in such a spirit. So this is the spirit he's talking about up here. Vigor, understanding and support of the people. This is the American people. In such a spirit on my part and on yours, we face our common difficulties. They concern, thank God, only material things. Material things are, uh, material things are like, uh, uh, like objects, like houses, like cars. Values have shrunk to fantastic levels. So he's talking about values. He's talking about how much money is worth. This was something that happened in the Great Depression. Values have shrunk to fantastic levels. Taxes have risen. Our ability to pay has fallen. Government of all kinds is faced by serious curtailment of income. Curtailment means less. So the government, the government has no money. And uh, the government does things like build roads and things like that. This means the means of exchange are frozen. That's like banks are frozen in the currents of trade. The withered leaves of industrial enterprise lie on every side. Enterprise are like, are, enterprise is like a business. When you see that word industrial, Think about things like making cars, railroads, like manufacturing. So this, these are the things that he's concerned with. These are like really big ideas, like the big ideas about the economy. And the savings of many years and thousands of families are gone. So if you store all your money in a bank and then the bank runs out of money, what happens to your money? It's gone. 
And that's what happened to people. The money was gone. More important, a host of unemployed citizens face the grim problem of existence and an equally great number toil, which means work, with little return. Only a foolish optimist can deny the dark. An optimist is someone who sees the bright side, like a positive, someone who sees the positive side of everything. But you can, you know, you could also be a foolish optimist. You're such an optimist that you can't see what's actually happening, can deny the dark realities of the moment. And yet our distress, distress is like pain, comes from no failure of substance. No failure of substance. I think when he talks about substance, he's going to be talking about like, well, I guess I would say in this context, Something of substance would be something that matters. We are stricken by no plague of locusts compared with the perils of our foref- which our forefathers conquered because they believed they w- and were not afraid. We still have much to be thankful for. Nature still offers her bounty. Bounty is a great word. It means gifts. And human efforts have multiplied it. Plenty. I say plenty. That just means enough. And more is at our doorstep, but a generous use of it languishes in the very sight of the supply. Languishes means basically like dies in the very sight of the supply. Primarily, this primarily in this sense means basically like mostly or most importantly. Primarily, this is because the rulers of the exchange of mankind's goods have failed. Rulers of the exchange of mankind's goods is a very fancy way to say, like, bankers. Stock, think stock market. Big banks. Through their own stubbornness and their own incompetence. Incompetence is a great word. It basically is a polite way to say stupidity. Have admitted their failure and have abdicated. To abdicate means to give up or to quit. Practices of the unscrupulous money changers Unscrupulous means, like, immoral. Money changers stand indicted. Basically, that's like guilty. Like the judge says, you're guilty. Indicted in the court of public opinion, rejected by the hearts and minds of men. True, they have tried, but their efforts have been cast in the pattern of an outworn tradition, faced by failure of credit Credit has to do with basically like loaning money. They have proposed only the lending of more money. Stripped of the lure of profit by which to induce, to induce someone to do something is to get them to do it. To follow their false leadership, they have resorted to exhortations. These are basically like loud complaints or loud statements. Loud statements. Pleading tearfully for restored confidence. They only know the rules of a generation of self-seekers. They have no vision. No vision is like a big idea about the future. And when there is no vision, the people perish. Well, there's a few new words. So I'll stop there for now. I may do a second part of this. I may not.